Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be discussing another game review uh, video. We're going to be discussing a couple of games that happened over the past couple of days on Tuesday and Wednesday, looking ahead at games on Thursday and Friday, and looking at the standings and seeing a couple of more teams before the 20 game mark. We're going to get to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here at the Nintendo Talking Channel. Now, uh, before we begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. We are so close to 200 subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I would never be able to do it with all of you guys. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So I'm going to begin this video by just discussing a couple of game reviews. We've had a couple of busy busy days. Uh, we had a 10 game uh, day on Tuesday. We had 3 game day on Wednesday. So we had a couple of more games come and go from the NHL. We've also had a couple of teams hit the 20 game mark. So we're very, very close to all teams reaching the quarter mark now so very very close to that happening too so I'm going to get into all those things I'm going to start with the game review recap first I'm going to start with all the 10 games that happened on Tuesday uh, so first we're going to begin here with the New Jersey Devils took on the New York Islanders on Tuesday at 4 o'clock this was a really interesting game very entertaining game back and forth action it was tied 4-4 late after the Devils scored twice to tie it up uh, but then the New Jersey Devils will get a huge late goal with about 30 seconds left from Curtis Lazar to to give themselves the win, avoid overtime, and beat the New York Islanders 5-4 to improve their record to 10-9-1 in their first 20 games, dropping the Islanders to 8-7-6. So this was a fantastic game for the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they had to come back in this game, so it wasn't ideal to be down, but they definitely showed their resiliency by being able to win this game. Jack Hughes had a three-point night again with a goal and two assists. Uh, McLeod, Lazar, and Mercer all had a goal and assist, and he sure also scored for the Devils in the win. Well, for the Islanders, Barzell had a three-point night with a goal and two assists. Dobson had two assists, and Horvath, Clarebach, and Pajot were the other goal scorers in the loss. So, not a great game from the Islanders, especially blowing a two-goal lead to lose in regulation. So, it was not a fantastic game for the Islanders, who dropped down to 8-7-6. and six. They're still in pretty good position right now, above 500, uh, hovering around the playoff spot. But still, it was not really great. And now the Devils are right behind them. Uh, New Jersey with the win improves to 10-9-1. It's a fantastic game for them. Uh, it was not great to be down two goals at one point, but they were able to show their resiliency, and for the second straight game, they've been able to win. So they're going to be looking to make it three straight games later today. Uh, then we had the Florida Panthers take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Really interesting game. This was a 1-1 game. Uh, Panthers led 1-0 for most of the game. The Maple Leafs were able to tie it, send it to overtime. Uh, no one scored in overtime, went to a shootout. The Panthers thought they wanted a shootout, but the goal was reviewed. It was called a double tap, uh, as Rodriguez would put in the rebound off of the shootout goal, and that's not allowed. So the goal was called off, and then you know, Maple Leafs win thanks to Noah Gregor in the shootout. Really weird game. You don't usually see uh, shootout goals be reviewed and take that long to be overturned. So that was a really weird game, but the Leafs do come away with a huge 2-1 shootout victory. To improve their record to 11-6-3 in their first 20 games, dropping the Panthers to 13-7-2. and So both teams are really good still right now. Panthers drop another game. Leafs reach a 25-point mark at 20 games, so not overly bad there for the Leafs. Gregor was a lone regulation goal scorer for the Leafs, while Gregor and Matthews were two shootout scorers for the Maple Leafs. For the Panthers, Stellan was the lone goal scorer in regulation, and Reinhardt was the lone goal scorer in the shootout. So, really good game there from both sides. Really close, tightly contested affair. Sort of like that series in the second round over this past year. A lot of close games. Uh, but this time, it was the Leafs to come away with the victory instead of the Panthers. So, really good win there for the Leafs to improve their record. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes to come the Philadelphia Flyers. Really good game there. The Canes would break a 1-1 tie, I think, in the second period. And they would get a couple more goals to ensure their win, and they wound up beating the Philadelphia Flyers 4-1. Huge win for Carolina. They improved to 13-8-1, dropping Philadelphia to 11-10-1. So I don't think this is too much of a surprise, but these two teams were second and third in the Metro. So it's a really good thing to, for uh, the Carolina Hurricanes to beat the team who was chasing them. Carolina got a golden assist from Michael Bunting, two assists from Sebastian Ajo and Jarvis Lemieux and Kakanyemi also scored for the Kings in the win, while Kondekne was his own goal scorer for the Flyers in the loss. So, not bad stuff there from the Flyers, they definitely had another really good game, uh, but this one was the one that came away on the losing side, and now they're only one game above 500. So, not great news for Philadelphia as they start to slip a little bit again, but still, really good stuff. They kept the uh, contention with Carolina for most of this game, but it was the Carolina Hurricanes who came away with a much-needed victory to improve 
improved their record, and for the time being, they had closed the gap between them and the New York Rangers for top spot in the Metro. Then the Minnesota Wild, uh, first game with John Hines being behind the bench, uh, uh, did a video about Everson being fired, Hines replacing him. Uh, if you want to check that out, you can check it out right here. I'll link up in the YouTube cards. Uh, but Hines was coaching his first game as a member of the Minnesota Wild, so he was uh, having his first game as head coach. Uh, the Wild got up to a 1-0 lead. Blues would tie it. This goal here from uh, Frederick Goudreau would uh, give the Minnesota Wild a late 2-1 lead in the first period, and the Wild were able to hold on for the entirety of the game. The Wild were able to win 3-1, end their seven-game losing streak, and improve to 6-10-4. So Hines gets his first win as a member of the Minnesota Wild, and the Wild finally end their losing streak, so that's fantastic news for Minnesota. Goudreau, Boldy, and Eric Sinek were the three goal scorers for the Wild in the win, while Pareko was the one goal scorer for the Blues in the loss. Blues dropped to 11-9-1, and like we said, Wild improved to 6-10-4. So, not a bad game. The Blues have started to lose a couple of games over the past little while. Uh, last game, it was their defense, which absolutely collapsed. This time, it was their offense, as they couldn't get them enough things. It always seems to be something with the Blues. If they're not winning, it seems to be either they're giving up a ton of goals or they're not being able to score. So, they're going to have to have a little more consistency if they want to try and make the playoffs this year. So, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but that's another loss with the St. Louis Blues. That is, they're now only two games above 500. So, going to be interesting to see. But with teams like Nashville and Arizona now breathing down St. Louis's back, they're going to have to start winning a couple games if they're going to keep up in the Central Division. Then the Nashville Predators, as we talked about them just right now, were able to keep their winning streak going, and now they're breathing down the St. Louis Blues' backs. They are able to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins 3-2 in overtime, uh, avoiding blowing a two-goal lead to improve to 11-10-0 and keep their winning streak going. They're now up to a six-game winning streak. Penguins dropped down to 10-10-1 with the loss. So it was a really good game. Both teams were really good, but it was the OT winner for the National Predators. McCarron scored twice and Forsberg had a goal, the OT winner, and an assist for the Predators in the win. While Malkin and Russ were two goal scores for the Penguins in the OT loss. So it was not a bad game from either side. The Penguins were able to come back from down 2 nothing. They at least got a point out of this one, which is not overly bad. Their first extra time loss of the season. But still, the Predators did some pretty good things in this game to get the OT victory and keep this winning streak going. So very good stuff there from Nashville to improve their uh, record. Then we had the uh, Dallas Stars take on the Winnipeg Jets. These two teams were second and third in the Central Division. Uh, two teams who were looking to close the gap between them and the Colorado Avalanche. And it was the Dallas Stars who wound up doing it. For the second straight game, the Winnipeg Jets lose. Stars shut out the Winnipeg Jets 2-0 to improve to 13-5-2, dropping the Jets to 12-7-2. So Jets are still looking pretty good, but this was a very close, low-scoring game that they are wound up losing. Uh, the Stars were able to get goals from Pavelski and Sagan, the two goal scorers in the win, and Andre stopped all 27 shots he faced in the shutout for Dallas. So very good stuff there from the Stars. They continue to prove that they are a really good and lethal team. Sure, they've lost a couple of games here and there, but I would say they were probably one of the favorites, in my opinion, to get out of the West for the Stanley Cup. So I think they're definitely a Stanley Cup favorites and look really, really good. So I wouldn't be overly surprised if they continue to do really well. But they're still in contention with the Avalanche for top spot in that division. Jets aren't too far out, but this was a really not great loss for them. It was close. It was a low-scoring affair, but it was one that the Jets come away with on the losing side. So very interesting game, but the Stars were able to beat the Winnipeg Jets 2-0. Then the Chicago Blackhawks would get up to a 2-0 lead, blow to 2-0 lead, but then recover after blowing the 2-0 lead, and would wound up beating the Seattle Kraken 4-3, ending their, I think, 6-7 or seven game losing streak, and improving their record to 7-13-0 at the 20-game mark. So, very good stuff there from the Blackhawks to end their losing streak. Uh, Kraken with the loss dropped to 8-10-5 on the year. This was not a fantastic game from Seattle. Uh, for the Blackhawks, uh... Anderson had two assists, and Kachok, Dickinson, and Whistle, and Tyler Johnson were the other goal scorers for the Hawks in the win. Well, for the uh, Kraken, Veneers had a goal and an assist. Both Wenberg and Karche also scored for the Kraken in the loss. So, not a great game there from the Kraken. Their defense was atrocious. They did not get overly great goaltending, and they let the Blackhawks walk all over them. They had to come back from down 2 nothing originally. They were playing from down behind to start with, and then they got back down again to the Blackhawks. So, this was not a great game from the Kraken, who are now two games below 500, and they're really going to have to push if they're going to try and make it back to the playoff mark. You know, for the Blackhawks, good game there from this team. Uh, they needed a win after all the off ice issues that they've been having over the past little while. Uh, so they were able to end their losing streak. They improved uh, to 7-13-0 at 20 game mark. Still not overly great and probably still going to miss the playoffs, but at least they get another win here. So very good stuff there for the Blackhawks. Then the Arizona Coyotes would send the Bolts to yet another loss. Uh, Arizona beats Tampa 3-1 to improve to 10-9-2, dropping Tampa to 10-8-5. 
So definitely not a great record there for Tampa. Definitely hovering around the 500 mark is a lot more than they have been in the past. Uh, I do expect Tampa to start picking up the pace, especially now with Vasilevsky, but they have lost back-to-back -back games, so really going to be interesting to see how much they can be able to improve. Uh, for the Coyotes, Carchoni scored twice. Kerfoot had two assists, and Boyd also scored for the uh, Coyotes in the win. So that was a huge win there for Arizona. Uh, meanwhile, for the Tampa Bay Lightning, point was a long goal score. So Tampa really needs to pick up the pace if they're going to keep pace in a very competitive Atlantic division that has them at 25 points, but also has the Red Wings at 25 points with less games played, the Leafs at 25 points with less games played, and then the Panthers and Bruins ahead of them, and the Sabres breathing down their backs right behind them. So if the Bulls are going to try and improve this team, they're going to need to try and win a little bit more. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but they have lost back-to-back -back games and for the Coyotes they're back to tied for a playoff spot they're doing really good they have back-to-back -back wins and they're not completely out of it yet so very good stuff there from Arizona then we had a rematch of last year's second round matchup between the Golden Knights and the Edmonton Oilers really close game this looked like it was going to be an Oilers regulation win they were up 4-2 late uh, but then the Golden Knights once again scored two late goals uh, the tie this game up at 4-4 uh, send it to overtime it would go to a shootout and the Oilers do wind up winning in a shootout. So it took a shootout. It should have probably taken overtime, but the Oilers do get the win. Uh, Oilers improved to 8-12-1, and and they're now on a three-game winning streak. Knights dropped to 14-5-4. So Knights get a point when they probably shouldn't have. Oilers probably shouldn't be giving out points, especially to teams who are ahead of them in the standings. Uh, McDavid had 3 points out of the goal and 2 assists. Yamark, Gagne, and Kane also scored in regulation, while McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins both scored in the shootout for the Oilers in the win. While Amadio had a goal and an assist, Roy had 2 assists, and Colossar, Stone, and Hutton also scored for Vegas in the shootout loss as they drop to 14, 5, and 4. So it was a really good game, really good back and forth action. Oilers had multiple leads. Like I said, they probably could have easily won this one, but once again, goaltending does hurt them a little bit, and they do wind up winning this one in a shootout instead of uh, regulation. So they are able to at least come away with the win here today, but still, it's not a very fantastic game there from the Oilers to blow a two goal lead. And then lastly, here, the Vancouver Canucks played the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, this was a 1 1 game going into the third period. Pedersen would score a very early third period goal, and then this goal here from Brock Besser with just a few uh, minutes left iced the game for the Vancouver Canucks, got a second of the game, and was able to become the NHL's league leader in goal scoring with, I think, now 17 goals. As Besser, with the goal, uh, increased the Canucks lead to 3 1, and that is the way the game would end. Canucks win 3 1 to improve to 15 7 1 in the season, dropping the Anaheim Ducks to, I think, their sixth straight loss now at 9 13 and 1. So the Ducks are not doing overly good right now they're keeping finding ways to lose uh for the canucks really good win there they've been a little bit worse over the last couple of weeks so to see them pull out a really close game against the anaheim ducks is very good and they're going to be going into a heavyweight battle tonight so it'll be interesting to see uh like we said besser scored twice miller had two assists and then Patterson got the game winner for the vancouver canucks while strom was a long goal scorer for the ducks in the loss so ducks still don't look overly good and they're on a six game losing streak while the canucks after losing to the San Jose Sharks just a couple days ago, are able to bounce back and have a huge win over the Anaheim Ducks. So those were all the games that happened on Tuesday. There were three games that happened yesterday on Wednesday. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens will get a late game winner and beat the Columbus Blue Jackets 4-2 to improve to 10-10-2 and in the season, dropping the Jackets to 7-13-4. So Jackets continue to do pretty good, but they do wind up losing this one. Canadians are back up to 500. Uh, Canadians were able to get two assists from Mike Matheson, while Newhook, Caulfield, Armia, and Lindstrom were four goal scorers for the Canadians in the win, while Lyon and Chinakov were two goal scorers for the loss for the Jackets. So really good stuff there from the Canadians and the Jackets. Both teams had really good games, but it was the Canadians who came away with the victory. So really interesting stuff there from Montreal. Uh, they improved to 500 on the year, while the Jackets dropped down to below 500 by six games again. So once again, not overly great news for the Jackets, but it was a really close game. Then we had the New York Rangers score two third period goals, including this one here from Jimmy VC to break a 2-2 tie and be help the New York Rangers beat the Detroit Red Wings 3-2 to improve to 16-4-1, dropping the Wings to 11-7-3 and ending their losing streak. So definitely, it was a really good game, really close game. Both teams had really good uh, showings, but it was the Rangers who once again come away with a victory. Once again, the dominant team in the Eastern Conference right now. Uh, Lafreniere had two assists. Miller had a goal and a assist. And Panarin and VC also scored for Rangers in the win. Well, Fabry had a goal and a assist. Kopp had two assists. And Sider also scored for Red Wings in the a loss. So it was a really close game. The Red Wings could have easily possibly gone this to overtime, but the Rangers continue to show why they are currently leading the league right now with 33 points. 
So definitely, the Rangers look fantastic. They could easily be the first team to 40 points, in my opinion. So it'll be interesting to see, but the Rangers continue to do some pretty good things. So Rangers win, improving the 3-2, and two, and they end the Red Wings' three-game winning streak. And lastly here, uh, the Charlie Lindgren made, I think, 37 saves. He absolutely shut the door on the LA Kings. And once again, the Capitals were able to get a fantastic performance from their goalie and were able to beat the Los Angeles Kings. Caps get a 2-1 win to improve to 11-6-2, dropping the Kings to 13-4-3 in their first 20 games. So, not a fantastic game from LA, but this was a really good game from Washington. Uh, Washington was able to get goals from Mike Michael and Mantha, who both had a goal and an assist, and Protoss had two assists for Caps in the win, and Kaliev was the lone goal scorer for the Kings in the loss. So, it was a really close game, both teams did really good, but was the Caps coming with a victory? Uh, Caps, like we said, move up the uh, Metro Division standings, which is huge for them, after back-to-back -back losses, and once again, Charlie Lindgren was a Really, really good goaltender in this game. Kings dropped the 13, 4, and 3, so they're still behind the Canucks and the Knights at this point in time, but they're still not that far off, so definitely. All these teams look really, really good right now, and uh, the Kings just come out on the losing side of a really good goaltending effort. So those were all the game reviews from the past couple of days. Going over to a couple of teams who have played their 20th game, we're just going to review their 20 game mark right now. Uh, for the New Jersey Devils, they for the 20 game mark at a 10-9-1 record for 21 points, 72 goals for, 74 goals against, a minus 2 rating. Players who have hit 14 or more points at the 20 game mark, uh, Doug Hamilton has 5 goals, 11 assists, 16 points. Tyler Toffoli has 11 goals, 8 assists, 19 points. He's on pace for 78 points and 45 goals. Bratt has 8 goals, 17 assists, 25 points. He's on pace for 70 goal assists and 103 points. And Hughes has 7 goals, 19 assists, 26 points. He's on pace for 78 assists and 107 points. And he's also played less games than all these other guys. So really interesting stuff there from New Jersey. If you look at Toronto, they've hit the 20 game mark. Uh, they're 11, 6, and 3 for 25 points. Uh, they're 69 goals for 67 goals against a plus 2 rating. Uh, players who have hit 14 or more points at the 20 game mark. Rally has 3 goals, 13 assists, 16 points. Marner has 5 goals, 15 assists, 20 points. Tavares has 7 goals, 13 assists, 20 points. Both Tavares and Marner are on point per game paces. Uh, Matthews has 14 goals, 7 assists, 21 points. On pace for 86 points and 57 goals. And Nylander has 12 goals, 15 assists, 27 points. He's on pace for 49 goals and 110 points. So Nylander's being absolutely phenomenal right now. That would be a, really a career high for him. And Matthews is still doing pretty good putting up goals. Then you look at the Minnesota Wild at the 20 game mark. Uh, they have a 6, 10, and 4 record for 16 points. 60 goals for, 78 goals against, the minus 18 rating. Uh, players who have hit 14 or more points at the 20 game mark. Kaprizov has 6 goals, 12 assists, 18 points. Eric Schneck has 11 goals, 7 assists, 18 points. X on pace for uh, 45 goals. Both those two are on pace for 74 points. And then Zuccarello has 5 goals. 17 assists, 22 points. He's on pace for 91 points. So Zuccarello is definitely has, still having a fantastic year, even though Minnesota's not doing overly well. Kaprizov is also doing pretty good. Eric's next having a fantastic season, but still, the Wild are not doing overly well right now. Then if you look at the 20 game review for the Dallas Stars, uh, they are 13-5-2 for 28 points, 68 goals for, 57 goals against, a plus 11 rating. Uh, players who have more than 14 points at the 20 game mark. Uh, ben has 4 goals, 11 assists, 15 points. Sagan has 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points. Johnson has 9 goals, 7 assists, 16 points on pace for 37 goals. Uh, Duchesne has 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points. Hintz has 8 goals, 10 assists, 18 points. Uh, he's on pace for 74 points. Robertson has 6 goals, 13 assists, 19 points. He's on pace for 78 points. And Pavelski has 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points. He's on a point per game pace at 82 points right now. So really good stuff there from Dallas. Then for the Chicago Blackhawks, at their 20 game mark, uh, the Blackhawks uh, have a 7-13-0 record for 14 points, 53 goals for, 73 goals against, a minus 20 rating, players who have 14 or more points at the 20 game mark, uh, that's Connor Bedard who has 10 goals, 7 assists, 17 points, on pace for 41 goals and 70 points, he's the only Blackhawk who has over 14 points at the 20 game mark. So it's really interesting to see that Bedard's the only player so far this year who has reached over 14 points at the 20 game mark, so it'll be interesting to see, but that's a really interesting stat for the uh, Blackhawks. And then yesterday, the Kings played their 20th game. So the, at the 20 game mark, the Kings are 13, four and three for 29 points, 77 goals for, 49 goals against, a plus 28 rating. They look absolutely phenomenal. Players who have more than 14 points at the 20 game mark are Quinn Byfield, who has four goals, 12 assists, 16 points. 
Uh, Kopitar who has 10 goals, 9 assists, 19 points. Moore who has 11 goals, 8 assists, 19 points. Both those two are on pace for over 40 goals and 78 points. Fiala has 6 goals, 14 assists, 20 points. He's on pace for a point per game place right now. And Kempe has 8 goals, 12 assists, 20 points. And he's on pace for a point per game pace right now too. So the Kings look really good at the 20 game mark. So those are 6 teams for the 20 game mark over the past couple of days. And there's going to be 2 more uh, teams to still hit the 20 game mark. The Caps are going to hit the 20 game mark later today. And then I think in a couple of days' time, the Ottawa Senators are going to be hitting their 20 game mark. And once the Ottawa Senators hit the 20 game mark, I'll show you the standings for all these teams at the 20 game mark. And we'll see who's under 16 points, under 20 points, and who's above 25 points and above 28 points. So we'll see who's at the, those points in time at the quarter mark. But for the time being, those are your teams who have hit the 20 game mark. So once again, teams who hit under 500 don't usually make the playoffs. So I mean, like the Blackhawks, the Wild, they're not looking overly good for making the playoffs. Uh, the Devils are sort of neutral. Leafs have hit 25 points, so they have like an 85% chance of making the playoffs right now. Kings have 29 points. They have like a 90% chance right now to make the playoffs. So they're all these teams are looking pretty good right now. And I do think, that, that, I mean, the Stars have over 28 points. They also have a 90% chance at this point in time to make the playoffs. So it's looking pretty good for the uh, teams in the Western Conference to make the playoffs at this point in time who are in the top three spots. So it'll be interesting to see but definitely, some of these teams have done really well at the 20 game mark, and some of these teams have not done overly well at the 20 game mark. I'm interested to see if any of those teams who are not doing overly well bring it back, and if any of those teams who are doing overly well wind up faltering a bit. So it'll be interesting to see, but those are your teams who have reached the 20 game mark. Uh, quickly going over to a couple of game previews over the next couple of days. Uh, there's 14 games today on the NHL schedule, so there's a lot of games. Uh, 4 o'clock today, there's 6 games specific time. Uh, the Sharks are going to be looking for their third straight win, taking on the Boston Bruins team, looking to avoid their fourth straight loss. The Blackhawks are looking to have their second straight win, taking on the Red Wings team, looking to get back on their winning side of things after losing to the New York Rangers. Uh, the Florida Panthers look to get back on the winning side of things as well, taking on the Montreal Canadiens team, looking to get back above 500. The New Jersey Devils look to pass the Philadelphia Flyers in the standings, as the Flyers look to avoid fall, turning back down to 500. The Tampa Bay Lightning look to uh, stop their falling and uh, win after losing back-to-back -back games, taking on the Penguins team, is looking to get back above 500. The Kraken look to get within a game of 500, taking on the Maple Leafs team, is looking to keep ahead of teams like Detroit and Florida, the Atlantic Division. Uh, the Carolina Hurricanes take on the New York Islanders at 4.30 Pacific time. This is going to be an interesting game. Canes looking to keep ahead of all of their Metropolitan Division rivals, so Canes are looking to improve their record. Islanders looking to try and keep pace with teams like Philly and Washington in the uh, standings, so it'll be interesting to see how that one does. Uh, the Minnesota Wild look for their second straight win with the new head coach taking on uh, Nashville, who's looking to extend their winning streak to seven games. St. Louis looks to avoid another loss. Taking on the Buffalo Sabres team was looking to improve to above 500. The Empton Oilers played the Winnipeg Jets. Oilers looking to uh, win their fourth straight, go to within three games of 500. Jets looking to avoid their third straight loss and uh, improve their record. Uh, to right behind Dallas and Colorado, uh, the Avalanche take on the Coyotes. Avalanche looking to uh, win their third straight, improve to uh, two games above 500, and close on a playoff spot. Avalanche looking to improve their lead for the Central Division over Dallas and Winnipeg. Dallas takes on Calgary. Dallas looking for revenge after losing to the Calgary Flames just a, around a week ago. Uh, Calgary looking to improve and uh, get back up to 500. Capitals looking to improve before a 20 game mark tonight. Taking on the Anaheim Ducks team is looking to avoid their 7th straight loss. And then the Vancouver Canucks and the Vegas Golden Knights, both teams looking to win and take full control of the Pacific Division. Those are the game previews for today. There's only two games tomorrow. Uh, the Ottawa Senators look to uh, avoid a third straight loss, taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets team, who's looking to avoid another loss, as they have done pretty well over the past couple of games. And the San Jose Sharks, after playing Boston today, will be looking to possibly win their fourth in a row, taking on the New Jersey Devils team, who's looking to really get back up in the Metro standings, and who will also be playing on the back-to-back -back after playing Philly today. So it'll be interesting to see what those are your game previews from today. And then a quick look at the standings here. Uh, as of uh, today, Boston had 31 points, uh, leading the Atlanta Division, followed by 28 point Florida and 25 point Toronto. New York Rangers at 33 points lead the Metro Division, followed by the 26-point Canes and the 24-point Caps. Uh, then you have the 25-point Red Wings and 25-point Lightning in the playoff spots. 
followed by the 23-point Flyers, 22-point Islanders, Sabres, Canadians, 21-point Devils, and Penguins, 18-point Jackets, and 16-point Senators. So those teams are all out of the playoffs right now looking to get back in. Meanwhile, for the uh, Western Conference, the Colorado Avalanche have 30 points leading the Central Division, followed by 28-point Dallas and 26-point Winnipeg. 32-point Vegas leads the Pacific Division, followed by 31-point Vancouver and 29-point LA. Teams in the wildcard position right now are 23-point St. Louis and 22-point Nashville, with 22-point Arizona, 21-point Calgary, 21 point Seattle, 18 point Anaheim, 17 point Edmonton, 16 point Minnesota, 14 point Chicago, and 12 point San Jose, all on the outside looking in. So, those are your standings as of right now. Definitely up to your guys' thoughts on all of this down in the comments. Uh, do, which sort of teams are you surprised are where they are at the 20 game mark who have just finished up? Are you surprised by any of the games that have happened over the past couple of days? Which games are you looking most forward to over the next few days? And uh, are you surprised at any teams at where they are in the standings? Definitely up to your guys' thoughts on all of this down in the comments. So, that's what I'm going to talk about. For today, remember to like this video and for really like it, remember to subscribe down below. We're so close to your subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I'll never be able to do this without you guys. So don't forget to subscribe. I also have a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that. So definitely check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.